Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenience Truth. I'm your host, Jennifer Zheng. As you may have heard, the CCP just announced on January 17th the GDP figure for 2023, which is an annual growth of 5.2%. Although we don't quite believe this figure, we are not quite sure what the real figure should be. A Chinese economist solved this mystery for us by using the expenditure method to calculate China's GDP for 2023. And the conclusion was astonishing. Instead of 5.2% growth, the figure fell by 4.9% or even 9.5%. Now, let's talk about how this conclusion was reached step by step for you to decide whether you want to believe these numbers or not. Please do leave us a comment after you listen to the calculation process. First of all, it should be noted that there are different ways of calculating GDP. The CCP adopts the so-called production method, i.e. the method of calculating the total output of, of each national economic sector separately, then deducting the intermediate consumption of each sector and finally summing up the added value of the output of all the sectors. On the on the other hand, the United States and the major Western economies mainly adopted the expenditure method to account for GDP, i.e. the total expenditure of the whole society on purchasing final products, including four major categories of statistical items such as personal consumption, personal domestic investment, government purchases, and net exports, and then subtracting the difference between imports and products and services to calculate the total amount of GDP. As we all know, the CCP's official GDP figure were not even believed by the former Chinese Premier Li Keqiang himself. That is why he proposed that, that three indicators, namely electricity consumption, rare freight volume, and bank loan disbursement should be used to measure the economic situation, and this is how the so-called Keqiang Index came about. Therefore, since the official data is not reliable, we can try to calculate China's GDP by using the expenditure method adopted by the U.S. and the major Western economies. This GDP calculated by the expenditure method consists of three components. First, net exports from net exports from trade in goods and services, i.e., trade surplus. Second, gross capital formation. Third, consumer spending. Of these three data, the trade surplus formed by goods goods and services can be found directly on the official websites of the CCP's General Administration of Customs and Administration of Foreign Exchange. The capital formation data is slightly lower than the fixed assets investment data released by the CCP's National Bureau of Statistics every month because investment must be completed before capital can be formed, investment that is still in the process of construction can't be counted as capital. But the difference is not that big, so when estimating the China's GDP, we can use fixed, as fixed assets investment data directly because this figure is available. An economist named Lao Man has connected China's trade surplus and fixed assets investment data from 2008 to the present and have translated this table into English. Here are those numbers. First, let's look at the trade surplus. It changed a lot especially and uh, between 2016 and uh, 2018 there was a continuous and a substantial decrease followed by a recovery in growth 
In 2023, with the decrease in the scale of goods exports and the recovery of outbound tourism by the Chinese people, the surplus once again experienced a significant year-on-year -year decline with a decrease of 19.3%. Now, let's look at the fixed assets investment data. China's fixed assets investment reached an all-time peak of $63.56 trillion yuan in 2018 and has been in contract contraction model ever since. In 2023, it was 50.3 trillion yuan, with a year-on-year -year contraction of about 12%. However, the CCP's National Bureau of Statistics has announced a positive 3% increase in fixed investment for 2023. I have checked this data and it is, it is indeed 57.2138 trillion in 2022 and 50.3036 trillion yuan in 2023. So compared the two, it is clearly down 12%. So I really don't understand why the CCP's National Bureau of Statistics choose to say that it has gone up by 3% when the figures for 2022 and 2023 are still publicly av av available. And when everyone with a third or fourth degree fourth grade mass level can work out that it is a 12 decline 12 percent decline instead of the three percent increase why the ccp's national bureau of statistics would get it wrong is really beyond me now coming back to this table the size of fixed Assets investment in 2023 has regressed back to the level of 2014. It shows that Chinese people's enthusiasm for investment has dropped dramatically. And there is only one reason for this. More and more Chinese people have seen that although the CCP has shouted a lot of slogans to save the economy, <coughs> Sorry, the hand on people's neck has never been relaxed. On the contrary, it has increased its strength. People are almost suffocated. That is to say, people can't see any sign of economic improvement. So why should they invest? Now, let's look at the consumption data. This is a bit more complicated. In theory, consumption consists of two parts, private consumption and government consumption. The government is also a consumer. It has to purchase all kinds of goods and services, official banquets, and expenses are significant forms of consumption. But Chinese government consumption is not based on market-oriented principles. It is more character characterized by power and money transaction. In other words, Chinese government spending can be defined as insider trading related transactions or even under the table transactions. It involves shandui <coughs> deals rather than engineering market transactions. For this reason, when calculating the real GDP increase or decrease, Lao Man did not include government consumption in the, in the calculation, but only included the private consumption data. <clears throat> 
Now, man believes that the, best, that the best way to calculate private consumption is to use the total population data multiplied by official per capita consumer spending data. Per capita consuming, consumer spending includes all aspects of people's expenditures, such as clothing, food, housing, transportation, education, healthcare, communication, and so on. Therefore, this calculation is considered reasonable. These are the figures for private consumption from 2008 to 2023. In terms of consumption growth, it was 1.8% in 2022 and 9% in 2023. This increase is easy to understand in 2023 after the CCP lifted its harsh zero COVID lockdowns. People did make a lot more travel, so consumption increased from 2022. Let's assume for a moment here that the numbers released by the government are correct, when in fact the real numbers could be much smaller than those. For example, in the population figures, the government announced that the population only decreased by 2.08 million in 2023, and that the population was still 1.4 billion. But in fact, as I've reported before, China's real population may only be 1 billion. But let's assume that for, the, for a moment that the government numbers are all correct and do the math that way. So the consumption figure in this table are derived by mult multiplying the government's population figure by per capita consumer spending. Next, we end up the trade surplus, fixed assets investment, and private consumption, and then we will arrive at relatively realistic GDP data that reflects the actual state of affairs. Laoman calls this number the actual GDP to distinguish it from the official GDP released by the CCP's National Bureau of St Statistics. Now, let's take a look at this table. Lao Man only published the actual GDP that he calculated. I, and I checked out the official figures and listed them in this table as well so that we can make a comparison. Also, according to the official GDP values in Chinese yuan and uh, USD, I have converted the actual GDP calculated by Lao Man into USD figures for each year and listed them in this table. As you can see, China's actual GDP Uh, was in a state of high growth until 2015. After that, the growth slowed down rapidly. And in 19, 2019 and 2020, it was negative for two consecutive consecutive years. This is in line with the actual feelings of the Chinese people. In these two years, the U.S.-China trade war and the COVID lockdowns have caused great damage to the chi Chinese economy. And in 2021, China's lockdown measures were relaxed to a certain degree, and the production order was resolved, so the economy experienced a wave of recovery. 
However, in 2022, the lockdowns intensified again. So actual GDP growth rate started to go down again. In 2023, everything seemed to be game over so to speak. The confidence of the people has been completely destroyed. China's relations with Europe and the United States have dropped to a freezing point. Many countries around the world began to decouple from China, withdrawing their supply chains and investment. Under these kind of circumstances, China's GDP growth, of course, logically went down to minus 4.9. Yes, minus 4.9. This is the GDP growth rate that corresponds to the actual feeling of the people. The people have felt the coldness to the bone marrow. The economy has entered a cold winter. Even careers like delivery have reached saturation. This shows how bad the economy is. As for the 5.2 GDP growth announced by the CCP National Bureau of Statistics, I wonder how many people really believe it. The data for two of <coughs> sorry. The data for two of the three major components of GDP, trade surplus and investment, fell by 19% and 12% respectively. Both are in double digits. At the same time, in 2023, the government as a whole was also tightening its belt due to physical constraints and drastically cutting administrative spending, so government consumption was not growing at all. Therefore, unless the growth rate of private consumption exceeds 20%. It is absolutely impossible to pull GDP growth back to above zero under the circumstances of a 19% and 12% decline in trade surplus and investment, respectively. Anyone with a little bit of mathematic knowledge can come to this conclusion. Let's emphasize again that the trade surplus and the investment in the tables we just shared, as well as private consumption, are all official data. So I think there is no problem with this calculation. Although government consumption is not included, since we, many we are mainly concerned with the GDP growth rate here, rather than the absolute value, the trend is ref it reflects is reliable. So now let's take a look at this actual GDP calculated by Lao Man compared with the official figures. As you can see from 2008 and uh, to 2012, the actual figure was lower than our official figures, but the difference wasn't too big from 2 trillion to 0 0.1 trillion. And from 2000, 13 and 2017, the five years the GDP calculated using the expenditure method was even greater than the official figures. It also shows that the GDP calculated using the expenditure method is not always smaller than the official figure. In 20 14, it was even more than 17 trillion yuan higher than the official figure. Therefore, I'd say that the expenditure method does not have a so-called systematic bias that will always underestimate GDP. Now, look at the six-year period from 2018 to 2023. The gap between the actual figures and the official figures is getting wider and wider. And in 2023, it is even as large as more than 33 trillion yuan, or about 5. Point or about 
seven nine trillion U.S. dollars. What does this indicate? It shows that the actual economic situation in China is rapidly declining, so the scale of fraud also has to be rapidly increased in order to maintain the so-called five percent growth target. By the way, please take a look at this column. The decline in China's GDP in twenty twenty-three, if it is. <coughs> excuse me, denominated in U.S. dollars is negative 9.5%, not 4.9%. This is China's real GDP. And by the way, the United States GDP in 2023 is estimated to be around 26.85 trillion U.S. dollars. So, if China's actual GDP is 13.09 trillion U.S. dollars, then China's GDP is only about 49 percent of the U.S., which is lower than anything anyone has ever talked about. The source of all the original figures in the table in this table is the Chinese government. The only difference is the calculation method. Those who are interested can verify by the can verify it by themselves, and then they will see how shameless the CCP's fraud has become. Well, that's all for today. If you feel like signing up for a membership or making a donation, please visit my website at jenniferzhengblog.com. Otherwise, please help me spread the word by subscribing to my channel or share my videos. Thank you. See you next time.